Traders, welcome to an educational video where we are going to be giving you a high level overview of all of the screener tools on TradingView. Now, as you can see here, right in front of the screen in front of you, I'm on tradingview.com. I'm hovering my mouse over products, going to screeners, find anything with a simple scan. And now I can screen for stocks, ETFs, bonds, crypto coins, CEX pairs. DEX pairs, crypto pairs, the new Pine Screener, as well as accessing heat maps, which are under the screener tools, because effectively you can visualize the entire market as a beautiful heat map and add screening capabilities to that heat map. But to get started, I want to make sure I just show you some of the screener capabilities so that you have a good high level understanding of what we're doing here. In addition, it's important to know that whether you're on trainingview.com or on the chart, there is a screener button right here off to the left hand side, which you can click to open. And then you can also screen as well from anywhere on tradingview.com, including the homepage, just as I'm doing right now, or even directly on your chart. So to get started, why don't I go to products, screeners, and how about we try something a little different and let's go to the crypto coins screener. Now, please do keep in mind that the screener tools on TradingView are exactly what they sound like. If you're interested in screening for bonds, go to the bond screener. If you're interested in screening for stocks, go to the stock screener. If you're interested in crypto, you're probably going to want the crypto coin screener, the CEX pairs, DEX pairs, or crypto pairs. I'll give you a very high level overview of these screeners rather soon as well. But first of all, please do keep in mind that we have deep dives into each of these screeners on our YouTube channel and written articles in our help center. So for example, if you want to learn more about the crypto coin screener, go watch that video, go read our help center article, and you'll get a deep dive into every possible feature. But for now, let me do a quick high level refresher. So for any of the screener tools you go to on TradingView, you're going to see four key things to keep your eyes on. Number one, you have a drop down here at the top. This is where you can create a new screen, rename the screen, export the screen, save it, and even open new screens that you've saved and worked on before. Secondly, you're going to notice all of the capabilities you have here to screen for. Think of these as your parameters or your filters. For example, if you only want to look at crypto coins that have over a billion dollars in trading volume in the last 24 hours, you click, select it, and check it out. We've now gone to just nine coins. That's another feature just to keep in mind as you watch this high level overview. Always pay attention right here to the total number of assets. In this case, 4,021 crypto coins. With one or two very simple filters, I can reduce that to just 68. So now you're already understanding what's happening here with these screener capabilities. We are searching the whole world for all of the symbols, all of the possibilities, and then adding the parameters we need to find the specific symbols that matter to us. In addition, if you ever think that maybe there's a filter that's missing, you're going to find a plus button here on your, on your screener. You can click that plus button. You can utilize this just as if it was, say, Google search. I was going to type in chain. Let's type in chain. So I've got blockchain ecosystems. I can even maybe type in addresses here, addresses with a balance. So I'm going to add addresses with a balance. Let's do a million and above. So now, as you can see, I've got 13 coins, volume over the last 24 hours of 100 million or more, and at least some addresses with over a million dollars or above on that specific crypto coin. So you can utilize this for all of the screeners that you see here, including stocks, ETFs, bonds, crypto coins, and on and on. Now, the third thing I want to make sure you know about your specific screeners is that you have these specific filters here, or you could call them categories to get a better feel for the data behind the crypto coins you're looking at or the stocks you're looking at. So you don't have to just look at overview, price, change, market cap. You can click through and look at addresses or perhaps you want to just see transactions. So this is giving you another data layer on top of the screen that you did. Obviously, you can't fit it all into just one overview, but you have this additional data for you to click through about your screen. So still the same, same 13 coins. We just have these specific data points we can move through. The fourth and final thing to keep in mind is that you can visualize all of your screens 
in a unique and different way because you can actually screen while looking at charts specifically. Again, this feature works essentially for all of the screeners here, not heat maps, which we'll show you soon, but this is pretty fantastic because if you are someone combining both screening capabilities with charts, you can run all of these screens, then look at the charts and try to find the symbol that's best for you. Also, just a quick reminder that when you do screen effectively and find the symbols you're looking for, don't ever forget that you can also customize all of these columns. So if there are some st data points or stats that matter to you, and perhaps some that don't, you can delete, you can reorganize, you can effectively create your own custom layout here for your specific screen. Now, moving on, I'm just going to go ahead now and switch to the bond screener because what's really important about this bond screener now is to rem remind you from a very high level overview that depending on the screener that you're utilizing, the filters are going to be fundamentally different. So, for example, on crypto coins, you're right, we could screen for addresses. How many addresses have a million dollars or more? We could click this plus and we could type in addresses. There's nothing here, though. That's because this is bonds. Bonds don't necessarily have the same data as crypto. There's going to be no addresses. There's going to be no blockchain data. It's entirely different. In fact, we may want to actually, for example, look at ratings. You know, OK, do they have an S&P rating? And what type of rating do they have? Are they AAA, A plus, AA plus, AA? Why don't we just look at AAA bonds? Now we've got AAA bonds, 895. Also, why don't we actually also decide to look at a specific region of the world? Let's look at the United States only. Let's uncheck the United Kingdom. So now we're looking at AAA, bottoms, bo AAA bonds in the United States, and we've got all of the data we need right here in front of us. And once again, keep in mind, you've got these data points that you can click to learn more. So it's still the same screen. Nothing's changed. Same 850 symbols, United States, AAA, US dollars. We're just clicking through to get more data. Or if we wish, we have our own custom look, which we have. All it takes is us moving something around. Perhaps we want to add a new feature or a new data point to the screen. We can do that. So that's a very important point. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now I'm going to click my drop down. I can export these results or perhaps open a new screen. And as you can see here, I've got some screens as well in the popular section. Perhaps I just want to look at US Treasuries. It's all here for me. So moving on, I now just want to make sure I explain some screeners at a high level that maybe you didn't know about. Stocks make sense, right? We all know what stocks are. You are screening for stocks. We have a deep dive on our YouTube channel about this stock screener. We also have tons of articles in our help center. In the case of ETFs, it's just what it sounds like, exchange traded funds. In this case, I already have a screen set for only exchange traded funds with assets under management of a billion or more. If I go to bonds, we just walked through that. But now let's talk about crypto coins, because it's important you know if you're a crypto investor or trader, that crypto coins, CEX, DEX, and crypto pairs are all crypto related screeners. They each serve their own different function at a high level. I'm going to cover that right now. Crypto coins is exactly what it sounds like. It is literally just crypto coins. There are 4,021 coins that you can scan for right now on the TradingView platform. I've already given you a demonstration, but how is that different from crypto pairs? This is where understanding the screener you're looking at is pretty essential. If I click crypto pairs, you're going to notice something just immediately different, which is that there are over 50,000 symbols in this screener. Well, why are there only 4,000 in the crypto coins and how are there 50,000 here? The answer is rather simple. For example, you can see we have BTC USD. We also have BTC Euro, BTC Euro. We also have BTC JPY. We have BTC and all other cryptocurrencies in different denominations. Actually, there is even probably a BTC F. Exactly, there is. So the point is, is that your crypto pairs is a place where you can run scans across all of the tradable pairs, BTC Euro, BTC Dollar, BTC JPY, and most importantly, all of that data coming through different exchanges as well. But 
if you're looking for something that's a little easier to navigate, that's a little more streamlined, that brings you the 4,000 symbols and the data you want to screen for, CryptoCoins is going to help you, especially if you're doing a fundamental screen. For example, maybe you want to do a fundamental screen for coins that have really, you know, that have a large number of transactions. Let's say, let's say 500 and above. So 54 coins. Now what we're doing is we're finding coins that actually have tons of transactions. It's not just about the pairs that they're trading on, but the fundamental data. In addition, the CEX pairs and the DEX pairs are quite important for you to know because CEX is a centralized exchange. Let's say you only trade on one centralized exchange. And let's just pretend, for example, that exchange is Coinbase. Well, I can click Coinbase and now check it out. I have all 856 data points here for Coinbase. This is critical because this is my trading platform. So I need to know what symbols I have access to. And I need to have the screener tools I need to find the most interesting coins that I have access to to begin trading. Also, in addition, it goes a little bit further than this because there are DEX pairs, in this case, decentralized exchanges. Now, as you know, there are decentralized exchanges out there in the crypto world. They don't necessarily have to be on a centralized exchange or a major platform or a large brokerage. It's, you know, it's a centralized exchange running on its own. In that case, you can click network and look at some of the centralized exchanges and the data that you have access to. Decentralized exchanges, sorry, data that you have access to to scan for specific trading opportunities across those exchanges, currently 9,087 symbols. And of course, keep in mind, you might have different data on a decentralized exchange than you would on a centralized exchange like Pool Info. If you're familiar with this tool, you probably immediately know about Pool Info. You're going to find that very interesting. There's also the all new Pine Screener, which is in beta. We will make a totally separate video about that because it takes quite a bit of coding skills and features for you to be able to write out your own indicator in PineScript, our proprietary language, and then see that in the screener tool. This is in beta. We've got help center articles and videos all about this, but it's really time now to move on to heat maps because heat maps are a form of the screener tool, but in this case, give you a bird's eye view of everything that is moving. That's right everything that's moving. So for example, what we've got here is a heat map of stocks. And what I've done is I have clicked the specific sort of ranges of price action I want to see. So I like to always draw people's attention here to these price ranges because what you're seeing are colors of red, green, and gray, depending on how those symbols performed. This is on a day, but you can see also those colors on specific time intervals of your choice. Maybe you want to zoom out. You don't want to focus on the day. You want to see a heat map of the best performing stocks in the S&P 500, or actually, you know what? Let's do all companies. Let's do all companies. Let's do the best performing stocks of all that are listed in the US year to date. Wow, that is quite a bit of red this year and surprising because this heat map is also sorted by market cap. You can sort this, by the way, by different features. If you want to see the symbols that get the most trading volume, volume times price every week, you can do that. But in this case, we're doing market cap and now you have a bird's eye view. And you can also click in as well. Look at Berkshire Hathaway at 14% among, amongst, amidst all this red. We click, we've got this nice chart. We can go right to the advanced chart now and get started. So that is the power of the stock heat map. And it's quite important to remember that this is not just about US equities. If you scroll down, you can do this globally. So it's pretty fantastic to be able to see the world globally right here, bird's eye view on a beautiful heat map that is colored green and red and gray, depending on the specific data points that interest you. For example, here's Spain. Let's look at all Spanish companies. Pretty cool right here, year to date with the percentage performance. Now, moving on to other heat maps, there's ETFs and crypto. I don't need to go too far into these because they are exactly the same as what I just said to you, just that they're different asset classes. So once again, you're just going to have different assets here for the specific heat map you want to look at. If you like ETFs, basket of funds, VOO, Vanguard, S&P 500 ETF, SPY, SPDR, S&P 500 ETF, you can use the ETF heat map to try to track which of the these assets is really performing the best. And of course, keep in mind, please, that you have different sorting filters than, say, the stock heat map or the crypto heat map, because ETFs have things like net asset value, 
top 10 weight percentage, all sorts of other really cool ways to visualize performance. We go to year to date. We've got ourselves quite a red year here. How about the last week? Any green? Not much green, but some flat. Well, moving on to the final point of this screener tutorial now is the crypto heat map, high level overview. You've got Bitcoin here, Ethereum, Tether, XRP. You can see it all right here. All the features very similar to what I was just showcasing, but it is probably important for you to keep in mind that if you do buy market cap, it might be somewhat hard to visualize here. The reason why that is hard to visualize is because Bitcoin is just massive compared to all the other cryptos. So you can sort by other items like total value locked. That might change it quite a bit because of the amount of money that's locked into that specific crypto. But if we go to market cap, we've also got some unique features. Once again, only four cryptocurrencies. We can do exclude Bitcoin if we're looking for tradable symbols. We could even just look at DeFi if we want to look at decentralized finance coins. The choice is ultimately ours. But ladies and gentlemen, this video is designed to give you a full walkthrough of all of the screener tools on TradingView from a high level overview. It's not exactly meant to be a full on deep dive into these tools, but it is a video and tutorial to get you started. Even if you trade all of these asset classes, you now know how these tools work how to access them, and where to begin. Once again, we have over 400 videos on our YouTube channel, so please make sure you subscribe. And our Help Center has tons of information and helpful articles. Please go read those. Thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.